largely staying quiet on this issue of the president publicly calling on China to investigate the Biden family. A few, like retiring Texas Congressman Will Hurd, called it terrible. Senator Mitt Romney weighed in a short time ago. He called it appalling. But there's few others who have been willing to go on the record about this. Former Ohio Governor John Kasich joins me now. And um, I want to ask you first, uh, I, I want to get your perspective as a Republican. Uh, but first, I want to ask you just about your reaction to these text messages, because the president, uh, his supporters have been saying there's no quid pro quo. But these text messages paint a very clear picture that military aid from the U.S., and a visit with the president were very much linked to Ukraine having an investigation into Burisma, this company that Joe Biden's son was on the board of, um, and also investigating a 2016 Ukrainian-linked uh, conspiracy theory. I mean, what's what's your reaction to this really taking issue with the president saying no quid pro quo? Well, first of all, I haven't had a chance to really look in depth at those text messages. It looked as though there was something being said that if you want to have a meeting with the president, we would like you to do this. I need to, I need to really go to the bottom of that and think that all the way through. Uh, but let me also tell you, uh, Brianna, what's really bothered me. This whole business of the president uh, trying to get the Chinese to get in the middle of this and to conduct an investigation against Biden uh, is just shocking, frankly. And our founders warned us about uh, foreign, you know, entanglements. And for the president to now, like, double down has got me really, really disturbed, upset, and it's forcing me to continue to think through all of this very, very carefully. And then the question gets to be, as we see the president's continuing ab ab aberrant behavior, uh, we've never seen anything like this. Are there guardrails? Are there are there limits to what we should tolerate in terms of presidential conduct? Whether it's the name calling, which he's done all along, but the way in which he's behaving uh, is really concerning to me. And then the question gets to be: Can there be some sort of bipartisan agreement that this behavior is out of control and unacceptable? And when I see some of these at least as one senator, say, well, I don't see anything wrong with it, Th that shocks me. Because we can't have somebody operating completely outside the norms of, of presidential behavior. This has serious consequences. The investigation should continue. The inquiry should continue. The more evidence that get, gets gathered, that if there is more and more evidence that absolutely creates a quid pro quo, then even people who are Republicans might have to say begrudgingly, yeah, this is terrible, we need to do something. But we have a way to go, and they have to proceed carefully. Most Republicans aren't saying what you're saying. I think we wonder if maybe they're thinking it as they work through some of this, but they're not saying it. Does not saying that normalize what the president has done and do long-term damage? Well, I, I think they need to look themselves in the mirror and understand why they're not willing to say anything. But, Brianna, I've been saying things about him for two and a half years. It's why I didn't support him. It's why I didn't go to the convention in my own state, because I'm frankly shocked at where we are today. Uh, but some of what we've seen over time hasn't surprised me. And so there's another thing we have to ask ourselves. Uh, Say the House passes impeachment resolution, it goes to the Senate, it doesn't go anywhere. Let me ask this question. We all ought to think about this. Should we, should we, you know, should we go forward with these proceedings? Is this the most effective way, or do we let the people decide this in an election that's just around the corner? That well, doesn't mean that we don't take this action. It's just something we have to we have to ask ourselves as we move down the road here. You said before one of the questions you're thinking through is: Are there guardrails? Uh, I think a lot of people would look at this, uh, a lot of observers, a lot of lawyers would say there don't really seem to be guardrails here. Um, do you think there are guardrails that keep President no, Trump I, I think operating that we have in the to norm? Ask, no. No, I don't think there are guard, guardrails. So there what needs to be to done? What he can do. Well, that brings to, to mind this coupled with what we're looking at at Ukraine, now his activity in China and uh, the, the Volcker texts and all these things have to be reviewed. Now, I do think 
that Nancy Pelosi ought to have a vote of the impeachment inquiry inside the House. I think that is an important step. But I think they have to be serious, which they're trying to be. I don't think they should be in a rush. We've got to let the facts uh, speak for themselves and let the, you know, let the facts determine the outcome in this. And if we can make it less partisan, and if we can get reasonable Republicans, you're not going to get the vast majority, but reasonable Republicans to say, yeah, I think this is very serious and action has to be taken, that is how I think the country can move together in a less divided way. That's why the inquiry is so important. That's why the facts are important. That's why the investigation into additional quid pro quos is important. That's why the activity around China, asking the, of all the Chinese, we're in the middle of a trade war with them, and now we're asking them to, do, to again, do us a favor and check this out. i got to tell you, uh, Brianna, on the scales, and I've tried to, look, I voted on impeachment. I know how serious this is. It is gut-wrenching for members to make a decision. But on the scales about where we are now, this action on China is putting more and more evidence here in terms of the need to move forward, in my mind. I'm trying Governor, to be honest and fair and, you know, all that and balanced. Governor, thanks so much. John Kasich, we appreciate it. Thank you.